Hi. Hopefully many of you had a chance to see Cassie Scuffle's marvellous walk along the River Puddle in 2021. Well, we were fortunate to get a view along that river made much, much earlier, nearly 50 years previously, for in 1975 local historian and filmmaker Gerard O'Kelly took a walk along the River Puddle and in the company of a marvellous young woman called Lisa he documented the river as it was then. Through the courtesy of a number of people including Gerard himself we are now fortunate and able to present that film to you today. It'll sit very well with Cassie's I think. My name is Lisa. I would like you to walk with me along the river Poddle, or as some maps refer to it as the Time and Poddle. The Poddle supplied the people of Dublin with drinking water up to the year 1244 AD, and with an extra supply from the Dodder watercourse, it kept on doing so until 1776. We start and catch our first glimpse of the poddle in the middle of Time and Lane, where it crosses under the poddle from here flows up underground into Limekiln Road and past Wellington Garage. This area is often referred to as the Green Hills. Before arriving at Limekiln Road, it has its last free and easy flow to fields around corners and trees with no new housing estates in its path. This, I'm sorry to say, may not last too long, as so-called progress has arrived here also. A waste pipe from a new housing estate has added more pollution that has already killed all the fish that once swam in the river.
Just before it enters Kimmage Manor, the river is divided by a weir and gate lock, which controls the flow of water. It now flows merrily through the Holy Ghost Father's grounds and till quite recently paid the manor the sum of one penny a month to record the daily height of the river. The river here still shows its former beauty that has been well cared for by the Holy Ghost Fathers. Further down the gardens it actually runs underneath portion of the manor. From here on it earns its proper name as we reach Poddle Park. The river runs underneath the front gardens of Poddle Park and then between two housing estates till it reaches one of the few remaining mills.
Having served quite a number of old mills in the way, it now comes to a field in Mount August called Tongue Field. Thus called because of the wedge-shaped stone masonry constructed on the bed of the river in such a way that one third is channeled to the left and two thirds to the right. That to the left was called City Watercourse, to the right, the Poddle. Today we have been lucky to meet for a short time Sister Anne Fitzgerald, who was bringing a party on a tour from Mount August to Warren Mount. As it happened, I became so spellbound with this portion of the Poddle, I was left behind to finish the walk by myself. Mount August was originally a farmhouse owned by the Byrne family. A temporary church was built in three months and the first mass celebrated in 1856. The foundation stone for the new church was laid on June 20th in 1866 but abandoned for seven years to lack of funds. In 1873 the building was restor restarted and completed five years later. The style of architecture was Romanesque, very much favoured in southern France. We can still see the remains of an old mill just before it enters Mount Jerome Cemetery. The puddle itself seems melancholy as it passes through this short part of the cemetery. On we go to a lovely hidden spot at the end of St. Clair's Avenue. Hundreds of people pass by this every day and do not realise the importance of this district. The hospice at Greenmount bought by the Sisters of Charity in 1885 the owners who were the Webb family used this beautiful building as their country home. During negotiations by Mother Aikenhead, the family were offered a bigger price by the board of Mount Jerome, but the Webb family, being Quakers, would not go back on their word. Now we walk down Lankillen Lane and meet some of the local residents.
With the final construction of the new drainage scheme, the puddle will then enter Dublin Bay. This will dry up the last remaining flow of water that at present flows underneath the canal. From Harold's Cross Bridge we now walk through some of the oldest remaining streets of Dublin. The old cobblestones are still to be seen on some of the lanes. These stones were originally imported from France. The last remaining view of the living puddle we now see in Warrenmount beside the convent before it enters the Liffey. The river flows up the two sides of St. Patrick Street from the 15th century onwards through the casting of rubbish along the banks and the making of ditches and dams by tanners. The course of the water was greatly impeded, so that St. Patrick's Cathedral suffered considerable damage. The Dean of St. Patrick's and the inhabitants of the area were taxed to meet the expenses of keeping the course clear. On several occasions the water rose in the cathedral as high as five feet. that the Corporation of Dublin purchased his interest in it. As the 19th century advanced, the mill wheel ceased to turn and the wooden, linen and tanning industries declined. The banks of the puddle were arched over and the water hidden. 
nearing the end of our walk, as the river passes by Dean Swift's birthplace, then underneath Dublin Castle, under Palace Street, Essex Street, and finally into the Liffey at Wellington Quay. The grating we see covering the opening in the wall was placed there at the time of the Invincibles to prevent any attempt to use the puddle as a means of reaching the castle with destructive intent. Hugh O'Donnell used the river as an escape route when he was held prisoner in Dublin Castle. Was that not marvellous? Thank you for staying with us. We're now almost at the end of the 2021 Harold's Cross Festival, a festival done in extremely interesting circumstances. We hope you enjoyed the festival. We hope you, you will join us tomorrow evening, Sunday, for the last night of the festival. And we hope to see you again through the year and especially next May at the Harold's Cross Festival 2022. Thank you.